All right, in my last video, we took a look at a bunch of different loop rates. We took a look at 8K, 4K, and 2K, showed a bunch of HD with black box overlay, and we just did a bunch of prop wash moves. In that video, I didn't really provide my conclusion on it because I really wanted people to come to their own conclusion uh, based on what they saw there. Also, I needed to do a little bit more testing to be sure of something. But in my Patreon only video, we did look at the preliminary data I had so far. Well, in this video, we're gonna take a look at that data here as well, and also some follow-up testing I did to really hopefully draw a sound conclusion based on the data. So here it is. Uh, based on those last flights I did, what we can do is open those logs that I had as the overlay traces and kind of take a collective look at that and we looked at PID error. So PID error is the difference between the gyro and the set point. The set point is what your commands are. So in a prop wash move, typically you're not moving the sticks and shaking the sticks back and forth, but the quad is shaking. Well, that will generate PID error. That will generate error, you know, the difference between the two. And in PID toolbox, you can go in and isolate down to sub 100 Hertz, set it to PID error, and you can see I have the 8K log, the 4K log, and then 2K log here. The this movement down here is just stick inputs that I'm giving it. Uh, you can see some prop wash stuff maybe here ish, uh, but most of your prop wash stuff is going to be from 60% throttle up to 90% throttle. So you can see the difference here, uh, and then uh, it's just the hertz in uh, vibration there. So this is sub 20 hertz, and then up to 60 hertz, and then maybe even up to 80 hertz. And you can see that, you know, the on these plots here, uh, when it goes from dark blue to light blue to yellow to red, that is more amplitude in the vibration. So you can see in the 8K log, the 4K log has a little bit more amplitude in prop wash vibration, and then the 2K has the most amount. Now, one thing I was concerned about that was that I had different logging rates. So I had in the 8K log, 8K logging, 4K, 4K logging, 2k 2k logging rate so my data collection i have collected a heck of a lot more data at the 8k loop rate um, four times the amount that i had at the 2k logging rate and i thought well maybe that statistically is pushing things off so when you have an anomaly like that well you devise another test and you go out and get some more data so with this information here what we can see is i went out and got 8k at a 2k logging rate and then 2k at a 2k logging rate and we're all did a same thing in the field when a bunch of uh, prop wash moves, same kind of moves that you saw before, back and forth, 180s, um, and basically it's like split S's where I flipped over and kind of floated back into the prop wash. So did those same moves. Uh, obviously I can't replicate everything exactly the same, but we're still seeing the same pattern. So here's the same plot. Pit air, you can see in 8K had less and 2K had more. And what I did, I switched it up here a little bit too, where I did 2K first. So my first pack was 2K and then 8K was my second pack. And I actually switched the packs as well. So the, the one that we had the good prop wash on 8K on the first test, I used that with 2K. So I kind of switched the battery packs here as well. And you're seeing the same pattern. And then uh, here's just uh, looking at the D term uh, amount of noise between the two. And, and you can see, uh, you know, we're not really trying to draw any conclusions there, but that's that's what we're showing here. You can see it up here, D-term. So just for simplicity's sake, I put those side by side. So this is the first round of testing, the 8K, then 2K. And you can see uh, less prop wash here, more prop wash 2K. Same thing now. This was, you know, 8K logging rate, 2K logging rate. Now this is 2K logging rate at 8K loop rate and 2K logging rate at 2K loop rate. And you can see the same pattern there. Now there's a little bit more to the story that you need to be aware of and you know the proof is in the pudding so some of these things I, I think it's good uh, that were part of the testing but the flight controller that was used there was a Revolt OSD board that uses an F405 processor so not the fastest processor out there you know F7s, H7s are now on the market. So there's two variants of the F4 processor you can see right here the F40X which is the F405 it clock speeds in around 168 megahertz. And then if you have a processor that's an F411, you can see that clock speeds around 108 megahertz. Of course, if you have an F7 board, that's 216 megahertz. And then of course the almighty H7, which is 
400 megahertz, so quite a bit faster than an F7. Now you can see with that on the F411, setting it up to eight kilohertz, you're running around a 60 CPU utilization rate, which is pretty high. And it's kind of interesting in Betaflight 4.3 at least, you can actually see some differences here. Whereas if I toggle up to five notches for the dynamic notch, that actually goes up to 62 Hertz. If I bring that down just to one, then it will settle down to around 51 Hertz. So it's kind of neat that you can see the CPU utilization changes just by increasing the number of notches or decreasing the number of notches. Now with that, I have the RPM filter bi-directional D-Shot turned off. And with an F411, if I try to go 8K and turn on bi-directional D-Shot, uh, you will see I will have some troubles here. Whereas when I try to do that and then reconnect to the board, it's not going to reconnect anymore. I will need to flash it as the board CPU utilization has been maxed out. So connecting to the board is problematic at this point. So to get out of this, if you ever have this issue, uh, what you need to do is hold the bootloader button on the flight controller and then re-plug it in and then reflash the board uh, to get it to get it back to basically to recover it uh, since you've kind of maxed it out at that point with the settings. So you can see here, I held in the bootloader button, plugged in the flight controller board, then it's in DFU mode right up here. I can toggle this no reboot uh, sequence uh, so it doesn't try to put it in bootloader mode since it's already in bootloader mode. And then I loaded the firmware and I can hit flash firmware and that will reflash the board so I can kind of recover it and get connected and I have to reset it back up again. And of course, at that point, don't do those settings again. Now with an F405 chip on here, you can see with the dynamic notch, five notches and the RPM filter turned on, bi-directional D-Shot, all that good stuff. 8K D-Shot 600. You can see I'm running around a 75 CPU utilization, which is pretty high. Uh, when you arm, it usually jumps up about 10. So that's about an 85% CPU utilization. So you're really pushing it and you will probably have some missed tasks. Now, with that said, I've flown that F4405 uh, on the OSD result, Revolt board, and it was fine. So you can see the proof is in the pudding. Uh, we're still getting better results at the higher loop rate than at lower loop rates, and I'm sure there was missed tasks and uh, some more loop time jitter, but again, the proof is in the pudding. So yeah. Um, be a little cautious with it. You are kind of pushing it with the F405s at the 8K. And that's why I'm sure why Betaflight, most of the devs that are in the weeds on low level stuff are saying really 4K is where you want to be uh, max, especially with RPM filtering. But do note, obviously, if you turn off RPM filtering, that drops your CPU utilization quite a bit. As you can see here with RPM filtering now turned off, I'm at 42%. So when you're in that range, you know, 8K, 42%, and you know, you're in pretty good shape uh, for running 8K and just use the, uh, it might be more advantageous, honestly, at that point to just use the dynamic notch and crank up these number of notches here and just run without the RPM filter altogether. It runs pretty good with the new uh, dynamic notch that's in Betaflight 4.3. And of course, with an F7 board, or of course, H7, forget about it for H7, you got all kinds of CPU there. You have 50% CPU utilization for an F7, any of the F7 boards. And this is with the dynamic notch, all five notches enabled, and the RPM filtering, all three banks uh, of RPM filters there. And again, 50% uh, CPU utilization. Keep in mind that uh, when you arm, it adds about 10, uh, percent to your CPU utilization. So uh, if you're at 50, you're really going to be at 60 when you're flying, so on and so forth. And just to show you, you know, the H7 here, you're running with all five notches on the dynamic notch and the RPM filtering with all three banks. With the accelerometer, because I had the accelerometer on for all these, you're looking about 27, uh, 28 uh, percent CPU utilization. Okay, well, that is it. Hopefully that provided some helpful information. Uh, I was really surprised by the flight performance increase uh, from 4 to 8K, and I vetted it with RPM filtering, without RPM filtering, all that kind of stuff. And yeah, I felt like when I was doing the tests, it was better at 8K, but I, I, I usually dismiss that stuff because there's so much placebo effect, and you know we think higher numbers better, so we just automatically go there. Uh, I don't 
whenever I think something feels better, I log it both ways. And then if the log shows it actually producing better flight performance, then I'm like, okay, yeah, that was real. Because there has been times where I'm like, oh, yeah, this is better. And I look at the log and I'm like, this is way not better. A lot of stuff happened like that with, you know, just testing different firmwares and different uh, flight controllers that I've had along the way uh, on the same firmware. And yeah, you start to peel back the data and you're like, yeah, it's kind of all the same. Um, but in some instances, yeah, it proves better. In some instances, it proves worse. If you have any additional questions, drop them down below in the comments. As always, thanks everybody, and I hope this helps.